Good morning. This week on Cooking on the Fly, we're going to be flying up to Butte Inlet. That's about 117 nautical miles north-northwest of Vancouver. We're going up to where the salmon are big, the uh, grizzly bears are fierce, and uh, the cooking is fantastic, as you're going to see. Uh, we're, our route today is going to bring us up the Georgia Strait. We're going to stay on the west side of uh, Texada Island, and we're going to intersect Cortez Island, and then we're going to hang a bit of a right over to Reza Island, ricochet off Stewart Island, and then go right up the inlet. Beautiful country. You're going to think you're in the Switzerland fjords when you see the water, the fish, the wildlife. Uh, today we're flying uh, with Shandor and Adam, who are the expert fishermen, and we've got Chef Angela here. We'll cook a feast if they can deliver the fish. When we come back, we're going to be high above the Gulf Islands, flying north to Butte Inlet. Today we got some fog and we've got some low clouds, but we're in a 1957 to have a beaver which will afford us the, uh, the time and the uh, flexibility to be able to dodge some of the fog banks and stay nice and low and slow. It's amphibious, so I can land on the water or I can land on the land, wherever we like. So we're feeling pretty safe about that. Uh, when we come back, I think the weather's going to be a lot better, we'll be able to fly higher and we expect to be back uh, later this afternoon with full stomachs and a lot of great experiences. Uh, we managed to get off and uh, fly up to Butte Inlet. It's beautiful here. Blue sky, it's calm, and now the fishermen are out catching their fish. Let's hope. So we managed to catch ourselves a fish and we're now going to go over filleting that fish. So essentially step one, obviously you got to cut the thing, right? Yep, done. And then step two is we're going to cut off the head here and then we'll get into how to fillet down the side. Okay, of now the can fish. I just stop you there for a sec? Yes, yeah. I've only ever watched people filleting a fish with a flexible you knife. You know, we don't have the desired utensil. Okay. But uh, you're able to do it with this, though. Well, yeah, yes. And uh, it's that, al it also fends off grizzlies really well. So like this is why. I like no, that's to pack good to know though, because a lot of people don't have those specialty knives. So it's yeah. nice to know you can actually it'll, do it. It'll with work. Knife. Okay. Uh, you know, pocket knife? No, probably not. So yeah. you, need, you need a pretty long blade, but okay. we should be good. We should be good. Okay, so 
if you actually can feel the fish, there's a there's a little plate here. Yep, I can see and it. I'm just gonna cut underneath the fin. Okay. And down along that blade. Yep. So up to his head, so we save as much meat as possible. Okay. And then down. straight down and through. Okay. And there you have it. Head off, right? Perfect. So now you have your fish here, right? Essentially, yep. you got obviously you got two sides to a fish. So I'm gonna start on this side, and the idea is we're gonna work our way along the spine now. People do this two different ways. They'll actually cut it so all of these bones come off and then they'll fillet them afterwards. Okay. Which with a less accurate knife is probably a good way to go. Okay. So we're gonna start by finding the top of this. Okay, you can also see there's a yep. bone there. A bone. And we'll go make a little incision along the top. Work your knife down the spine. And this knife is fairly sharp, so the less strokes you take, yep. the prettier the fillet is going to be. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to get in. You should you should hear some popping because that's these uh, bones that are coming up through the fish here. Okay. And so once we have a nice incision, we're essentially just working our way down the fish, all the way out to the tail. And Come there on, it's that easy. Is your hold on? We'll get a good shot of this. Wow. I'm impressed. Uh, there's also a little fin here that you kind of want to... Yeah. There we go, we got it. Huh. But as you can see, there's a nice salmon fillet. Wow. Okay. Okay, so that's excellent. So you want to keep yeah, working your way back. Lots of pressure on there. Yeah. And eventually you're going to get to the end and we want to poke the knife through. It'll help us uh, with um, getting to the tail. So yeah, give it a good put. There you go, okay. you're through and work all the way back out to the tail. That's beautiful. Let's flip come this over. on. Oh, I didn't get quite through here. Hold on. Okay. Now, do I just cut the? Can I just cut the fin uh, off not, there? Not there. So let's lift it up. Yeah. Yeah. And you can kind of work it that way. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. Okay. Not as flawless as you, but not That's bad. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Although I am doing the harder Very side. Very good. And then like, <laughs> let's let's slice okay. this again in here. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. You cut right through the bones. That's fine because we can clean that up after. Excellent. Perfect. Flip that over, lay her down. And then we just Again, trim all that off. off. But we are okay, good to go. Mine doesn't look quite as pretty as <laughs> yours does, but it's not lots, bad for a first go. Okay, so what size would you like, Angela? Uh, just portion size, so it depends on how hungry you are. Okay, so let's do about there. Sure, that works. Perfect. Today to feed four people in this little bag is um, everything I need to make my meal. So what I'm going to pull out of here next is I've already grabbed my olive oil out and I have some dried herbs de Provence that I've mixed with some uh, French sea salt, so coarse salt, and uh, some pepper and I'm just going to sprinkle a little on the salmon, rub it down with some olive oil and we'll just let it sit for a little bit because these are dried herbs and it's nice to have a little moisture hit them so the essence can come out into the meat and give it a little time to do that while we're waiting for our fire to prep. Beautiful, what else is in that bag? In this bag I have toasted hazelnuts, feta cheese, uh, panko for our breaded panko mix. Um, we also have... Um, Brown blah, sugar? Blah, blah. No, it's not brown sugar. It? Actually, it's ground hazelnuts that I'm going to mix with the panko. Brown hazelnuts. And that's going to make our, our crust for our salmon. I also have some San Marzano tomatoes for our salad. I have uh, slivered onions. I have uh, pancetta that I'm putting on skewers with some summer squash. Uh, these are perfect in season right now. These are little soft summer squashes. You don't have to remove the rind. It's completely edible. And so I'm going to thread these on skewers with pancetta and brush them with olive oil and some herbs de Provence. And we're going to grill those over the fire also. And then we'll have a nice little salad with our salmon. Not, That's amazing. Not a bad meal out in the middle of nowhere, wouldn't you say? Isn't it? Now this pre preparation table, did you actually fly this in with you? <laughs> Absolutely. It's my lucky prep table. I bring it with me everywhere. No, we found this on the beach actually, and it was laying here just as is. You use what you got, right? Only That's what in, cooking on the fly is all about. Only in beautiful British Columbia. I'd say. Pretty nice. I'm going to put some seasoning on this salmon. Hopefully that eagle that's flying out there isn't going to swoop down and steal it from me. So dried spices are quite a bit uh, more potent than fresh. So you want to be quite sparing with how much you put on. So that's good for those pieces. I'm just going to drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. 
And then I'm just gonna massage it into the fish and then we're just gonna let it sit. So I'm gonna cook them most of the way through on the skin side. Two reasons for that. Uh, I like to get the skin nice and crispy and I also don't wanna burn the hazelnuts or the pinko. We just wanna crisp it up. So a couple minutes on each side. As I'm kind of looking at the fish here is if it moves on the pan it's crisping up nicely so I really could flip it at this point if I chose to do that again I don't want to because I don't want to burn the panko and the hazelnuts so what I'm looking for is the color of the fish to change about three quarters of the way up once it's changed three quarters of the way up then I'll give it a real quick flip and I will uh, pop it onto a serving plate of some sort which I'm sure will scrounge up off of the beach somewhere and we'll be good to go. Our feast will be ready, and I think I beat the tie. So now it's ready to flip. The back is nice and crispy, and I can see that my oil is getting quite dark here, so we don't want to burn our food. So we're just going to give it a flip. Looks good. I'm just going to tip some of the grease and oil and butter that way to get on our breadcrumbs. Give it the touch test. Now I'm going to crisp it up just a little bit on this side if it, because it still feels a bit tender to the touch for me, but I had to flip it because campfire cooking, you have no control over the temperature, unfortunately. And it was starting to get a little too hot on that side. I didn't want to burn it. So I'll just flip it back. It had a second to cool off. And now we'll continue to cook it on the other side. Our crust is on there nicely. Give it the touch test. So it's close, but not quite ready yet. So we're just gonna let it do its thing. And it should be ready in no time. Today's wine selection, much to my chagrin, because I'm the pilot and can't drink, so I'll be having soda water. But um, everyone else is gonna be having Bench 1775, or is it Bench 775? I'm not sure, the, the I, well, then one is part of the age. So it used to be called Soaring Eagle. It's from Okanagan, and it is a delicious Chardonnay. I'll have some when we're safe and sound back in Vancouver. Basically, this is our completed meal that we have here. Shandor rustled up a beautiful wooden platter for me again. Uh, all I have to do now is dress my salad. All I'm using is some olive oil and some lemon, and then I'm going to toss it and taste it because the pancetta is salty, which I decided to add in at the last minute. And the feta cheese is also salty. You have to be very careful not to add too much salt. So I have a little trick when you're squeezing lemons when you're out in the wild like this. If you put your hand here and squeeze the lemon over your hand, your fingers will catch any of the seeds and you won't be chomping on seeds. So I'll toss that seed. You're going to need a fair amount of lemon because again, this is in place of vinegar because I didn't want to have to worry about bringing yet another thing. Give it a little toss. Look at that salad. Beautiful. Perfect. So I actually have a little bit of extra lemon which I intended to use on the salad but don't need it. So I'm going to give a little squeeze over the fish. Maybe even a little bit over our squash. It just brightens the flavors a little bit. There you go. A fall meal cooking on the fly. Can I just say thank you to the pilot for getting us here safely despite the fog? And I'd like to say thank you to the chef for preparing such a beautiful feast. Thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Right. Oh, this is <laughs> and the pilot's drinking Pellegrino. <laughs> so I'm going to start, try with the salmon first. A little piece of the salmon. Oh my god. That salmon is unbelievable. Um, the salad. I wish I would have had this yesterday because I was playing Scrabble with my son and I was trying to define the word outdone. I could use this as an example. You have outdone yourself today. Oh, that is well, fantastic. Wow. That is fantastic.
brutal.